Hey, welcome to the National Real Estate Post. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that Liberty Home Equity Solutions has a webinar this Thursday where they're going to show you how to generate reverse mortgage leads. If you're thinking about adding some new business to your pipeline, reverse mortgages might be just the thing you need. They make it really easy to get started. So show up. You're going to love it. Click the banner you see right here over on your right and get registered. Hey guys, Brian Stevens here with the National Real Estate Post. Welcome to sunny California where the weather's either 85 or 985. I mean, seriously, check this out, guys. We have fires in the west, we have floods in the east, and hail the size of baseballs in the Midwest. Now, of course, we've had this in the past, but have we really had it at this level? I don't think so. Now, according to Kurt Hinke, he's a former Sacramento fire chief, fire season used to be a five to six month proposition. It's now year around due to the droughts and the fact that the climate is changing. And if you think we can't have an impact on our atmosphere, try this one on for size. Park your running car in your garage and shut the garage door. Sit in there for a little while and see if you change your mind. So how does this affect housing? Well, first, for those who own homes. It's really quite simple in the West and in the East, but fires in particular, they're going to cost you more money. Here's a hint. State investigators have tied PG&E equipment, such as trees hitting power lines, to some of the blazes in October that in total destroyed nearly 9,000 structures and killed 44 people. PG&E faces damage liabilities totaling as much as $17 billion and possible finance ruin. Its stock, it's down 37%. And check out this graph. On the left is the Napa fires of last year. The stock plummeted and has continued to drop since, and if this graph was longer, you'd see the effects of current fires. In short, California's publicly traded utility system, who's being held primarily responsible, is on the brink of bankruptcy. Now, of course, you know, PG&E, our publicly traded utility, is never going to go completely out of business. The question really becomes, who is going to pay? Well, homeowners, of course. PG&E is also pushed to raise electricity rates to pay for damage other than collecting from shareholders and risking their bankruptcy. That would allow the companies to continue normal operations without bankruptcy, which would lead to higher electricity prices in the state of California. I love that. Charge you more instead of paying their shareholders less. Anyway, you did catch that. They're gonna charge homeowners more rather than have it affect their shareholders. Put this in the context of Zillow. We know who's important to these companies, their shareholders. But anyways, what we're saying here is, we think that the price of insurance is going up, right? Taxing homeowners' ability to make their payments going forward. In the past, we looked at short-term fixed rate adjustable loans going upward, which made it harder for homeowners to make their payments. Now we're looking at not insurance, but probably that too, the cost of utilities going up for homeowners, making it harder for homeowners to make their payments. What's the long-term outlook? I guess it depends on how long we stay in our prolonged hot spell. So on the East Coast, they're facing similar problems, but with rain. A couple years ago, homeowners were facing flood policies that could see their payments jump by over a thousand bucks per month which would have led to a catastrophic foreclosure epidemic. Yet that whole thing was thwarted by a revamped national flood insurance pool. Yet there's problems with that too. Within the United States, the debate has taken several different forms. Proactive policymakers have pushed to rework the national flood insurance program, which pays people to rebuild their homes after floods, even in areas where climate related damage is likely to strike again. That program, which is $25 billion in debt, put the burden of climate change related natural disasters in the hands of the federal government and the, this would be you, taxpayers by extension. And all this tells us it's just a matter of time before those policies increase or the burden, like in the West with PG&E, will be divided out in a manner that affects all citizens, homeowners and renters alike. In the West with higher utility costs or in the East with higher taxes, either way, the cost of maintaining a roof over our heads is going to increase via insurance, taxes, and utilities. So the question for our show is what effect is this going to have on real estate? Well, it's quite simple. Homeowners and aspiring homeowners alike will have to reallocate some of their housing expense to housing protection. When that happens, our buying power diminishes by how much and how far is yet to be seen. 
What we do know is this isn't letting up, so a hiking cost is inevitable. Now, if you think I'm wrong, just look at the foreclosure rate in Florida and Houston with those two hurricanes, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Frank? Okay, scoot over this way a little. Step back just a teeny bit. I did it. Timmy! It's, it's a nice windy day today, which is good for another one of these suckers, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, this is our hometown, Vacaville. This just came through a couple of days ago. It was a thrilling and exciting time, to say the least. Yeah, if you weren't like in its way. Yeah, so there you go. Do us a favor, guys. Leave us your comments down below for our show and share it with others. We really appreciate that. Subscribe for free if you're meeting us for the first time. Have a great one, man. We'll catch you here tomorrow at the National Real Estate Post. No joke. We've got Roman candles in the car. Do you think we should share that with the police? Obviously pretty safe at this point. See ya. Bye. I suppose.